What up YouTube? This is Mitch here with another tutorial, this time over ScreenFlow. It's the program that I've been using to record a number of my recent videos. And you can tell because I have my smiley little face in the bottom right hand corner usually in the programs. So you can rewind and check out those videos for quality if you would like. Um, but on this video I'm just going to show you how to use it. So let's go down here. I'm going to grab screen flow here. This will pop up right when you get in screen flow. And this allows you to record video from the eyesight, which it's doing. My face! You can record audio from the speaker in your computer, or if you have a speaker connect up to through a, like an audio interface or whatever, which I don't have mine connected right now, so it doesn't come up. But if it was, it would be in here, chilling. And then you can also record computer audio if you're playing music or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to record a little bit here. Preparing to record. Shift Command 2 to stop recording. And. Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is a little test video. Oh, yeah. Shift Command 2. And it should pop up here in a second. There we are. Now. I didn't know this when I first got it, but you can edit a lot of your video inside of this. Um, there's some things that it's lacking, and for that I have to export it to an actual movie editing software. But for most of uh, my tutorials, I haven't had to do that. I can export it right from here and upload it straight to YouTube. Uh, so yeah, let's get into this. Right here is my the recording of me and the audio that the computer was taking in. What I can do is detach audio from this. So it has my audio line and the camera shot of me. And this is the actual screen recording. If my computer to, would to have been making any sound, as in, uh, say, music or some sound that a program was making, that would, be come down, that would come down here, and you could detach that audio also. So you could have possibly four lines right here of different things to edit. But for right now, I'm just going to stick with this. Uh, I'll grab this eyesight. What I can do is I can come up here to the video properties. And you can rotate it a bunch of different ways. It's kind of interesting what you can do with these. I haven't had to mess with these too much. But um, you can do reflection, any of your shadow. Uh, but what I really want to show you is this add video action button down here. So I'm going to click on this right here. And it's going to bring up this little tab right here. And I'll just set it right in the middle. And I'm going to bring my cursor. Oh, that scared me. To right there. And I'm going to move this if I can. Come on, buddy. There we go. I'm going to move it right to the middle. And then. Oh, check that out. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to do this down too. Zero. Then I'm going to move this down to the bottom. Then what this is going to do is it's going to make this little uh, view thing that, or this little uh, uh, video of me, it's going to move it from the center to the bottom in this span of time of the recording. So I'm going to get back here to the front, press play. Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is a little test video. Oh, yeah. Shift command. Shift Command 2, that's what I was trying to say. So, uh, yeah, that's what you can do for the video. In your audio, you can do the exact same thing. and Come over here to audio and add audio action. Um, if I have this clicked. If I have this clicked, add audio action. There we are. And I'm going to stretch this out over the same thing also. Now, what I can do is if I wanted to decrease the volume for a certain portion of the video, I can have it all the way down up until this and then at this point I can increase it to 170 percent so let's see what that looks like it's gonna move the video down here and increase the audio while it's moving oh yeah there you are so you can do a video action you can add an audio action um, what I don't like is though you have to click this little button called Mix Input to Mono. If not, what my 
what my system does is it only comes out of the right speaker. Uh, the, I, I don't know why it does that. It might be different for you, but um, I always have to click this little button here called Mix Input to Mono so that it comes out of both speakers. Just something to make sure you realize. And then you can just add a little bit of reverb, EQ, um, just, a, just a little bit of a, whatever you want in there. I've never had to mess with that too much. But, uh, and then what you can do, I come down here to the screen recorder and I can do clicks. If I wanted, if I clicked, I don't, I don't believe I clicked, so I, I'm not able to demonstrate this. But if I ever click the mouse in my recording, it will have a little radar around the mouse right here. Which is very cool if you're trying to give a tutorial over a program where you need to the user or need the viewer to know where you clicked. So definitely useful. You can do different pointers, um, opacity of the actual radar that I'm using right here, this effect. And then I can even make a sound when it, whenever I click. Now which is cool because I remember hitting shift command 2 at the end. So I'm going to see if it will display my shift and command here at the end. Shift command. No, I don't think it did. Shift command. Nah, damn it. Shift command. Yeah, hey, there you go. Um, show modifiers key, keys pressed. You need both of these pressed, and then it will show shift and command. It didn't say two because at two the video stopped, and so it skipped out on that. But if you ever need to do that, which it could very well come in useful in a many different tutorials that you could, you could be making. So there you are. Uh, pointer or callet action. Uh, I haven't had to mess with this too much. I guess you can add a callet and then um, uh, edit it for whatever reason in here. And then you can do text properties. And finally you have your media. Now if you wanted to add music into your uh, into your video you can easily add media down here or even add another recording if you recorded something in a separate uh, at a separate point um, you can definitely add this record and add a recording and add it at the end or before this and down here if I ever wanted to split one of these I have to put my pointer somewhere and then I can split at playhead and since I have all three tracks selected it will split all three tracks. Boom, there you are. And then you can easily delete on the delete key, highlight and move, oh, if I didn't grab that, and move all the way over to the beginning. So that's an easy way to edit your videos in ScreenFlow. So there you are. There's most of the editing settings. Now, once you're all ready, you want to export it and what you can do up here is you can come to file and check this out you can publish right to YouTube if you want I'm not the kind of person who likes doing this because when you open this up there's one of my things I'm going to sign in really quick and show you that you don't have very many options when doing this straight to YouTube so I don't like doing this what I usually do is I export it and here is where you get a lot of debate over which is the best settings. Um, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. You cannot go wrong with web high or web high multipass. I'm using web high multipass, but I come in here and customize it just a little bit. I come in here to size and I come down to 1280 by 720 HD. So it compresses it just a little bit more so the file size is a little bit smaller. Then I can press OK and then OK again. And then instead of having it full which is 1440 by 900 which is the size of my screen that I'm rocking right now I can scale it to a custom size which is 720 by 1280 which is exactly what I need since I set the um, compression up here to that exact same thing and then if you have a video with a lot of action I my friend and I cast a lot of StarCraft games and there is a lot of action and a lot of motion in those so we always have to have the use motion blur checked. This will add a little bit more to the size of the file, but for how much more it adds, which is not very much, it is very useful and it makes your video look a little bit more professional. So I, I would always suggest having this checked. And then you can just select where you want it 
what you want it to save as and export it and then from there you can upload it to YouTube which I think is a faster way of going than just going straight up publish to YouTube so there you go everyone that is the main overview of ScreenFlow which is the program I've been using I will put a couple links in the links below in the description to other videos that I have done using ScreenFlow I have actually recorded a video in full 1080p um, it's a StarCraft replay with my friend and it is beautiful so if you want to check that out be my guest and I will see you next time comment if you have any questions uh, make sure you subscribe and press that little thumbs up button that would be greatly appreciated thanks everyone have a great day